Hello, I'm Jason. Welcome to this lesson of the Laplace Transform Tutor. We've taken quite a journey as we've learned about this thing that we call the Laplace Transform. Usually the first time you're exposed to that transform is in a pure differential equations course um, because that is really one of the major strengths of the Laplace Transform. We've first learned that it's simply an integral. It's an improper integral that goes up to infinity and you can take a function of time, any function you want, if you can evaluate that integral, then you can transform it to a function of s. And you can also apply an inverse transform and go backwards and so you can go back to s and back to t. It's an invertible transform. It's fully recoverable. And that has very important implications. Um, but before we really used it for anything useful, we derived some essential transforms, which we have on the board. We're just going to summarize those here. If you see an exponential in time, then it becomes what we have here. If you're in Laplace transforming a constant, it's 1 over s. If you're Laplace transforming a power like this, then we have this rule. And if you're transforming a cosine or a sine, we have these rules that we've been using the whole time. Now the corresponding inverse transforms are also here where you can go backwards from the s domain into the time domain and we've used those for so many problems now that I don't feel like talking about them anymore here but you can see the the nice duality of how moving back and forth between these things. All right, And then we wanted to solve some differential equations so we had to learn how to apply a Laplace transform to a derivative and we learned that basically it's s times the Laplace minus an initial condition and it gets a little more complicated if the derivative is higher you're incorporating more and more initial conditions um, when you take a Laplace transform of a higher derivative and we learned that that was very important because one of the most important things about the Laplace transform that makes it useful is you can solve differential equations with them right so what you end up doing is you Laplace transform both sides collect your Laplace uh, on one side of the equal sign and you have a function of s that you want to invert. And we can of course use these rules here to invert them. Uh, and in that process, initial conditions are incorporated. So notice how to solve a differential equation, you need to know the initial conditions. And you usually apply that at the end of a differential equations problem, but when you're doing a Laplace transform, it's kind of rolled up like a nice part of the present. And that's what another one of the strengths of Laplace transform is it incorporates initial conditions when you're solving these differential equations. And I can't stress enough how important that is because, you know, as you study engineering and science and pure mathematics and physics, uh, differential equations really govern the world around us. They really do. And unfortunately, most of the solution methods for those equations are quite a pain to, to, to drill down and, and get them all correct without making a mistake. Well, Laplace transform has its own challenges, but by and large, you transform that equation to an algebra problem. You do the algebra and then you invert it back. Now along the way we learned there 